2013, I joined a team called Dragonborns. Dragonborns, you know, Skyrim was a hot thing back then. I think it was just released, and uh, Dragonborns was a team that was formed by Shushi. Shushi, the legendary mid laner that won the World Championship back in Season 1 with Fnatic. Legendary player. He was the mid laner of the team, and uh, I joined the team because my own team, we were disqualified. Team Solo, Mebdi, Jensen, Doc, and Jax, all that jazz. Long story, I'll tell that story a different time. I joined Dragonborns, they invited me in as a substitute because Yamato Ken was known as a guy who could play everything. I played AD carry competitive, top lane competitive, jungle competitive, even mid competitive, everything except support because, you know, I'm cool like that. Nevertheless, I joined Dragonborns, you know, uh, for me, even as a substitute, it was a dream come true for me because the rumblings that me and my peers heard before season three about what EULCS is going to be and NALCS is going to be. Everyone's going to be paid a salary. Everyone's going to have this protected by Riot Games. Everything is going to be very legitimized because before that was the Wild Wild West. There was no money. There was no way you could walk into a room with your parents and convince your parents that what you're doing makes sense at all because only the top dogs were making money. The top dogs were only making money because those were the guys that we all looked up to. The TSMs, the CLGs, even the Dignitas, you know, these guys were absolutely puffing. There was Fnatic and SK as well, of course. You know, these were the guys that had the big stream numbers and they kind of fueled the dream in all of us. It's like, yo, we can actually make something real here and this, this time we've invested into this game can actually become something meaningful. And when what you love is, you know, reaching the capacity where it can become what you work with. I believe this is something that we all dream of. But nevertheless, I joined Dragonborns as a substitute. I sub in for scrims because at the time, everyone still had life obligations sometimes. You know, Hozan, R.A.D. Carry had some real life things they needed to do. I subbed in as AD, sometimes Spontex had things to do. I subbed in as top. I just made sure that the team kept busy and I played from home. Eventually, they call me up. They say, yo, Spontex, it's not working out with us. We want you to play top lane, you vibe with us a little bit better. I'm thinking, my lord, this is my moment. At the time, you know, I told you guys that, uh, you know, in terms of payments from other organizations, I had never gotten paid. You know, the money that I earned at the time was through Edo boosting. I have been forgiven and I have been punished. So, uh, you know, I'm just in the spirit of telling the truth. I had contracts where it's like, oh, we're going to pay for your travel. You will get a voucher for 50 euro in our shop that you can use to buy a mouse pad. You know, this was the contracts that I had. And whatever money I won from tournaments or whatever money that I got from actual teams promised was just monopoly money because the managers and the TOs, they just would change name on Skype and just rebrand their tournament from, uh, from some other goofy ass name, right? Nevertheless, I get asked, yo, you want to come out to Cologne and play with us? I say, of course, rock and roll. Told my parents, yo, I need to do this. They say, you need to finish high school. There's no way you're going gonna to drop this thing. No way. I said, okay, I can do high school and I can play UCS at the same time. The travel, 12 hours, was pure hell. I don't know who the hell booked my flight. I had to take three flights and then a train, 12 hours, first time traveling on my own. Not first time, I had traveled a couple of times. Nevertheless, 12 hours, boom, I arrive. I don't care. I don't care how tired, hungry, anything. I didn't care anything at all. I just wanted to play in the OCS. That was my only dream. I arrived at the gaming house. It looked like someone had dropped a bomb on it and then rebuilt it with the scraps. It was horrible looking. I was like, where's the PCs? You know, I entered the building. Where's the PCs? Can I have food? It's like, barely, there's no food there. No, nothing prepared. We go around the corner by a shitty schnitzel. Nevertheless, I sit on the floor because there's no table. I sit on the floor, I eat the schnitzel. Suddenly this Timberwolf fucking straight out of Game of Thrones just comes and just wants to eat my schnitzel. And I'm scared. You know, back then I was scared of dogs. I was scared of dogs because some like a dog bit my father's arm. And I was scared of dogs because our neighbor also had a dog that almost attacked me. Nevertheless, I was scared of dogs. And this definitely didn't help. Now I'm not scared of dogs. I love dogs. So this Timberwolf, legit 80 kilo dog, straight like, I don't know. I don't know how Shushe ended up having it, but he brought it over. Right. So this dog. Hangs around, wants to eat my schnitzel. I can't even go to the bathroom because most of the time this 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 Timberwolf would just chew a bone in front of the bathroom. And you try to like walk past it, it was just he, he thought I wanted his bone, you know. I just wanted to go to the bathroom. Nevertheless, I ask, where are the PCs? There's no PCs. We have no PCs. Why, why, why are we calling this a gaming house? We have no PCs. I slept in a room with four guys, we had no PCs, we borrowed a laptop from Fnatic. I played on my MacBook. So basically I had a MacBook, but only like one USB slot. So I had to choose between a mouse or a keyboard. Obviously I chose mouse. 
I'm not going to be like this mouse pad gamer. I used the keyboard that was integrated in the MacBook. And I used uh, Bootcamp to basically use, put Windows XP on my PC, 13 inch monitor, small ass shit like this. I was playing like this, you know, no problem. I didn't care, ELCS time. Our internet was also garbage. So whenever we didn't scrim, we just play Heroes of Might Magic 3 on uh, the Fnatic laptop that we borrowed, which was a good time, but uh, definitely not a good use of our time. Nevertheless, first week of matches, we play against Copenhagen Wolves with Bjergsen and the Fischl. You remember, fuck you, Bjergsen. Bjergsen didn't think that they would qualify. Bjergsen was underage to play. And then, of course, we played against Fnatic, which was the SOAS, Cyanide, Xpeke, uh, Yellow Star, I believe, and Rated Roster. We played against them. I played Morphite against, uh, I believe, SOAS Jace. I was doing quite well, but we lost anyway because, to be honest, we were not that good. The following week, what made me so excited because of the timing of me being something was just perfect. We were doing a roadshow. A damn roadshow in the middle of the regular split. We were flying out to Lille. We were flying out to Lille. I had never been in France. And we were flying out to Lille to play at the Zenith Arena. My God, I'm thinking, what is the Zenith Arena? Damn, what a name. I googled that shit up. Massive place, capacity, 8,000, something like this. I'm pulling this all from memory. Maybe I'm wrong, someone can correct me. We're going to play at this massive venue. We arrive at the hotel. Next morning, boom, continental breakfast that would blow your mind. I had never experienced anything like that. I felt, damn, all my work has led to this moment. I'm living a good life. Chocolate fountain, dip your strawberries, mangoes. Pineapples, eat pancakes, eat Belgian waffles, sausages with six different types of meat, beans, endless beans, eggs, omelette, whatever you could think of. I had the food coma of a lifetime. Nowadays, I would never be so brave to push myself into that kind of a food coma ever again. But nevertheless, we move on. Food coma or not, we had to make it to the venue. I basically, I could roll to the venue. We go to the venue. Didn't have access to like practice pieces or anything, but we had a little moment before the match to warm up. And I had brought my gear. But my manager comes to me and says, Yamaro, you need to play with Steel City's gear. It's a sponsor. They were not happy that you didn't play with Steel City's gear the, the previous weekend. I'm thinking, Mr. Manager, please. Why on earth are you say, telling me this now? Why didn't you give me gear in the, in the past? He said, we didn't have gear. I was like, do you have the gear now? He, so I, I, I can at least warm up before my game here. He said, no, we have to wait for Xpeke. I'm like, why are we waiting for Xpeke? He told me, because Shushe spoke to him and you're going to borrow his gear because he plays after us. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm going to play with someone else's gear. And... I'm not going to be playing with mine and I have no chance to warm up. I'm like, okay, doesn't matter. I'm still here. I'm excited. I'm at the Zenith Arena. I just entered. I saw how big it was in person. I just entered. I was excited nevertheless. Then he showed up. He's like, I have this keyboard. So what on earth is this? He showed me like this prototype keyboard. Keyboard that hadn't been released yet. It's like this big ass keyboard, like macro buttons on the side. I'm like, what on earth is this? It looks like a damn spaceship, like a prop from fucking Star Trek. And I had to play with this prototype, sorry, Steel Cities. Uh, I had to play with this prototype keyboard. Okay. He, he asked me, do you want to play with this? I was like, do I have a fucking choice, brother? He said, not really. I was like, okay. So Xpeke shows up. He gives me his headset. So I think it was Cyanide's headset. Xpeke is a uh, mouse. I was like, okay, rock and roll. Let's play on stage. A time has come when you're called up. And all of a sudden, everything fucking dawns on me. Poof. I realized, bro. When we arrived, the fans were not, weren't there yet, but the energy in the room, you know, and when you've gathered so many people, like 8,000 people all in the same place, all sharing a passion and love for the same thing, the energy and the, and the air is completely different. It's electric. It's intoxicating. It's addictive. I walk on stage. I can feel how the energy is trembling through my fucking gummy souls all into my body as if my heartbeat is matching the, 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 the beat of the room. I walk on stage. I remember that it was, it was of wood. So everything, when, when, when people were moving, stamping the ground, you could feel it tremble like a damn earthquake. 
We walk on stage, we get introduced. I'm standing there next to legendary players. Shushay, we're about to play Gambit. It was Alex Ish, Darian, it was Diamond Prox, it was Edward, of course. Ghost of Pepper at the time, I believe. And then additionally, of course, uh, Genja, you know, the, the Genja 420 uh, build -out. To play against them, our coach had cooked up this level one strategy. We was in the zone and I could, I could, I was just feeding of that moment. I knew as I was actively in that moment that I'm creating memories that will last a lifetime. We go into the game, I'm playing Zed. We do our level one strategy. We managed to get the first part. I get it. I have Elixir Fortitude and I have potions on, on potions, on potions, on potions, on potions. Back then, there was no potion prohibition. You could drink as many potions as you wanted and you could drive to any lane, no problem. There was no laws, right? Potions on no end. I believe Dyr Dyr uh, like Dyrus invented this build playing Mordecai at the top and then it just spread into everything. I'm laning versus Alex Ish bottom because we had 2v2 on mid and 1v1 on top. And uh, basically back then lane assignments were just crazy because you had the option of doing almost anything. So I'm laning versus Alex Ish. Now I can just feel how I'm marinating him. You know, he only has five potions. I had like 13 potions. I'm marinating him. I'm about to get this first blood on this dude. I have Ignite. And then all of a sudden, level five, boom, I kill him. Solo kill. Oh, you know, solo kills feel good. But at a venue, where everyone sees, it's not the same as doing it in front of 100,000 people online that are watching the stream in person. The reaction. It takes you over. Time goes slower. I solo killed the guy. I'm 2 0 up because I got the first ball as well. I'm feeling, damn, this is my moment. This is my moment to take some ground. This is my moment to really, really become more than I already am. We lose the game. Gambit was way better than us. Even though I solo killed Alex Isham, I ended up carrying the game because he was playing Evelyn. Um, we ended up losing, but it didn't really matter to me. What I had experienced was something that I would chase forever. Because I had played events, but events where League of Legends was the side topic. Dreamhack, Berlin Campus Party, Insomnia. League of Legends wasn't the main thing. In the zenith that night, it was the main thing. And as we passed through the crowds and we interacted with people, took pictures for the first time, every time I take a picture with the fan, it's, it's a crazy experience. It's still a crazy experience to today. Because to me, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that someone wants to take a picture with me. My home. I'm, I'm doing something with, with, with something I, I love. It just happens to be that, you know, there was someone in that moment in time that it enjoyed it. We were taking pictures. I can see in the eyes of these, these people that they also participated in creating their own personal memory that will last a lifetime. And the reason I'm sharing this story is because the intangible benefits of having the roadshows, because I'm not going to speak on the economics of it all. I don't understand the economics. And I worry, I worry that as everything is all measured in terms of numbers at a balance sheet that you sacrifice the long term you sacrifice the soul of what keeps people involved because when you have players drawing inspiration from those roadshows and those moments and having something so grand to work towards it really drives you in a different way to experience something live in person is something that I wish that every pro player gets to do, and that every fan also gets to do, because it's something that just sticks with you for a very, very long time. And as we're moving forward, you know, we went through the COVID era and uh, budget cuts are happening. Once again, I don't understand the economics. That's not the reason I'm making this video. I can only understand the, the lasting impact on someone that experiences something like that and how involved they will be in the future of that region, of that game, of that sport, of League of Legends in general. 
there's a connection that is formed in real time when you create those memories that um, is simply irreplaceable. And I think that for the people that are watching that from outside, as they are watching the game and the crowd really thunders in moments of great gameplay, there's a healthy jealousy that is created. I want to be there. Or even in some cases, I want to play there. This extends, of course, to what we had in Lille recently. I was there. We had uh, Casey beat Movie Star Riders, which was an epic event. We had Fnatic, of course, against G2 in the final. Wunder subbing in and G2 winning. Roadshows still happen, but these roadshows are far too infrequent, I feel. Because in the process of only looking at the stat sheet, only looking at the economics and the numbers, our viewership is up, our viewership is doing well. I think that losing the soul of what creates a very deep connection to the game comes at a great risk. I love the game. I've had my moments that have created my connection with the game that will last a lifetime. And my only fear is that in that process, there's going to be many people that don't get that opportunity to create that deep connection to their favorite team, their favorite game, their favorite region. So I hope that in the calculation for what is deemed worthy in terms of spending your money, that this is something that um, is carefully considered because the intangible benefits of the roadshows is something that uh, I can speak for because I've looked those people in the eyes. And I think the roadshows and playing at these massive venues and being in these massive venues, they make it all make sense. It, it makes it all make sense for people involved in the scene and also for the people outside looking in. So those are just my two cents. I hope it wasn't too long-winded. The bottom line is, I hope that there's a way to create more roadshows, especially now with Casey involved, especially now with Ebay's extended involvement. I think that there is a lot of potential, a lot of a lot of potential. And um, if you want to make the League of Legends esports scene, the one that thrives for a very long time. You need to give people opportunities to create connections that last a lifetime. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, something that I said was relatable. All the best.